One of the all-time performers for the Fort Wayne Comets over the years, who still holds the record for most points in a year, Terry McDougall on the horn with us, and Terry lives in the Flint, Michigan area at this time, and uh, Doogie, how are things going? Pretty good, Bob. Real good, as a matter of fact, except that I'm, I don't, I'm not enjoying this winter so far. Boy, you're not kidding. Uh, it's been pretty snappy, and I know it gets a little tougher up around the Flint area where you are, but... Uh, you know, let's let's hark back just a little while uh, to uh, Terry McDougal, hockey player. And uh, as I recollect, you played uh, junior wear up in Swift Current. Swift Current, Saskatchewan, for the Swift Current Broncos. And at that point, got drafted by Vancouver Canucks. And uh, beyond that, then your your history goes into the International Hockey League. Right. Uh, my uh, Vancouver sent me to Des Moines, where I played for the Des Moines Capitals for a couple years, and then I ended up in Fort Wayne for. I don't even remember, six years, Bob? Was it more than that? I think you played there two years. You've got an 11-year career. Yeah, I think you had seven years here. Seven years. years here, yeah. Yes. Uh, my one one of the things I remember about you before you ever came to be a Fort Wayne Comet was in Des Moines, and you and another little guy by the name of Stone. Steve Stone, yeah. Were probably two of the best penalty killers I've ever seen in hockey. Really? Well, thank you, Bob. I mean, you guys, I remember against us how many shorthanded goals you people got, and I think at one time uh, you you or the team owned the shorthanded goal record for a year. Yeah, that, that's possible. And uh, you guys were awful, awful quick. Do you ever figure what happened to Stoney? No, you know, I don't know. I know Steve is, uh, is from Toronto area. I, I'm pretty sure. As a matter of fact, I do. I think he's a fireman now. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. That's the last I heard of Steve. Well, one of the things about Des Moines, you're probably one of the few teams that won a, what, a Turner Cup and then fold today. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I really liked playing in Des Moines before I, before I ended up in Fort Wayne. Uh, we had a heck of a team that year, too. Yeah, you had some great hockey yeah, players. I, as a matter of fact, I think about six of six or seven of the guys that were on the Des Moines Cavaliers that year ended up in the NHL the next season. And what, Danny Ballard, your coach? Yeah. You yeah. ever see Dan anymore? Well, you know, he, he's been with Detroit Red Wings. I, I bumped him to him one time, you know, but other oh, yeah. than that, no, not really. But, uh, no, Danny stops by here once in a while in his scouting chores. And oh, whatnot. is that right? But, uh, you, you know, he had some great years here, of course. In fact, uh, tying Lenny Thornson for the all-time single-season record of 139 points. Hit yourself a big all-star uh, game plus. I think you're still ranked sixth in all-time scoring, Doogie, in the International Hockey League. Is that right? I didn't know that, Bob. So well, you haven't checked the record book lately? No, I haven't. No, I still follow hockey, but, you know, I haven't really kept real, real track of it that much, except, you know, watching NHL men on playoff time and stuff. It's pretty amazing what's going on with the IHL these days, Isn't though. that incredible? It's unbelievable. I thought maybe you would have been watching that. Uh, well, I, I've seen what's happening now. They're starting to, they're talking about getting teams in Europe. and <laughs> I mean, what what is, uh, I mean, I talk to, with my girlfriend all the time, about how hockey everywhere in, in, in every league is, is booming right now. Yeah, it's incredible how it's It's unbelievable. Going. I mean, would you have ever thought that uh, when you played here that you would have uh, 26 sellouts in one year as the Comet? No, I mean, it's just turned around completely. I mean, I mean, every city, though, even, even the, 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 the lower level leagues, like this, the Central League and the Colonial League, I mean, the crowds are getting, it's unbelievable. What's, what's really happening? What's... I, I think probably there's a, an awakening in the entertainment business where people are have tired of sitting watching the boob tube yeah. and decided they wanted to come out and get some fresh air. Then they made the arena smoke-free so they can get fresh air, and I think they're enjoying the action. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. You know, it's quite something to see. Well, what's a franchise now in the IHL, like five million? They went up to six. Yeah, are you kidding? And uh, is, I was, was, was going to borrow some from you, Duke, and see if we couldn't get one started somewhere. <laughs> Boy, it's, it'd be nice. I'd like to get back into hockey somewhere. You know, it's 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 it's, it's fun to see. You know, a sport that you and I both know how great of a sport it is to watch. But it, it's great to see it's getting its due in the United States. I'm sure that you're aware that uh, the new franchises in the I now uh, within the last couple of weeks include Chicago. Right, Chicago, Minneapolis, and Houston next and year. Houston, and then they're looking at Detroit, uh, San Francisco, and either New Orleans or Charlotte within a year for a 20-team league. How about that? Well, man, that's unbelievable, isn't it? thing is, it cost you as much to buy luggage, Duke, to make the trips as it used to be what you'd made uh, playing the game. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of opportunity for hockey players these days. Once uh, once you left the game, per se, in the Flint area, uh, did you ever get involved in it in any way beyond that? No, I never did, Bob. I work for a company where I'm, I'm traveling all the time. I'm gone like half the year on the road, so I really don't get a chance to do any of that. I'm, I kind of miss it, you know. 
You haven't skated a bit then, eh? I haven't put a pair of skates on since I quit the game, Bob. And at that point in time, are you still able and willing to come to an old timers game if we needed you? Yeah, I, I'm sure I would. You know, I, I would need a, I'd need a year at least to, <laughs> to uh, you know, get get motivated and get out there and practice a little bit before I ever showed up. You know, I wouldn't want to embarrass myself. Well, you may not be aware of the fact that Moose Lalo showed up here last year. Uh, yeah, not this year, but right. he hadn't skated in a long time. And the first thing Moose said was, "Look, if you want me to do this." I mean, uh, what the heck, you got to give me more time. Yeah, really. So Moose came, and he had a lot of fun, and at that point said, hey, be sure you call me early because I want to get in training next year. Yeah, week. really. I mean, I wouldn't want to show up with no moves, you know. I used to have a couple moves. I wouldn't want to show up with none. Hey, I'll bet you still have them. And, uh, you know, it's amazing. Uh, we had uh, this year at the Old Timers, uh, we had the All-Star game here. Yeah, how'd it go? And, and it was just incredible. Is that right, eh? We needed you, though. We got hammered 7-3 by the IHL legends. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe one of these days when I get a little older, then I'll have an excuse, you know? But you know what? I'm talking about moves, though. It's amazing, even some of those old IHL legends. Is that right? Uh, what what they did. I mean, you had Bobby yeah. Plager playing. and Plager, Is that right? Plager's diving and blocking shots <laughs> like he was. And, you know, Phil Meir was goaltending right. along with Dougie Sotart. It was really fun to watch, and yeah. I think uh, our old timers who play a pretty good uh, game of hockey just couldn't keep up with them. <laughs> so we needed you bad. Yeah, well, may maybe next year. How's your golf game? Well, it's I, I had a little I had a little bit more chance to play this summer. It's not bad, you know. It's not as good as it used to be. I, I don't play that often still, yeah, but yeah. not bad. But you do an awful lot of traveling, Doogie. Yeah, I've been sport, on the road a lot. With you a know. transport group or what? Yeah, yeah. Move mostly uh, GM people, General Motors people, cars, stuff like that. Oh, okay. So uh, you're one of the, I know there's some big uh, transport outfits out of Flint, and uh, you yeah. move cars and or people or whatever. Yeah, right. GM people that are uh, that are relocating, zone people, yeah. sales people. You know, it's funny, I, uh, knowing you as a hockey player, I wouldn't have anticipated you uh, working at that level. Do you enjoy what you're doing? It's, it's okay, you know. If somebody would have told me when I was playing hockey that I'd be doing this, I wouldn't have believed it. But, you know, I, no, I definitely would like to get back into hockey some, at some level, you know. But with all the openings, and it's, it's beginning to be incredible. How about the uh, Colonial League that you have in Flint now? <laughs> They've been drawing like almost 4,000 a game. It's like 3,600, I think, they averaged before uh, January 1st. Wow. It's unreal. I, and I mean, that hockey, I guess, is okay, but, uh, you know, it's it's not the IHL level or anything like that. And it's, That's what I'm saying. Every level of hockey is just unbelievable. Well, I think there's an old IHLer who played with us a few years back by the name of Kevin Curther, who must have right. an incredible amount of points and penalties, uh, like 55 or 60 goals and yeah. all kinds of stuff. So right. it, it's, it's a goal scorer's league, I guess. Right. Right. So, uh, but but hockey. Uh, I guess once hockey is in your blood, it kind of never leaves. Does it? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, I get excited watching the playoffs again. It's, it's you know, hockey is, is like any sport. There's so many games during the season that once the playoffs get here with the intensity level going up, though, I, I get interested in watching again. One of the things that I uh, that I see going on in hockey that didn't used to happen as much and I think the rules have been relaxed, is all the clutching and grabbing that goes on at every level. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, with, with all the rule changes, I guess that, that's I guess that's what's happened, you know. There's been so many rule changes, and, you know, they're trying to take fighting out of the game now, which I, I don't believe they should. You know, I, I yeah. com, coming from Western Canada, you know, not, not a bit, being a fight... Uh, in a lot of fights myself, I still don't believe they should take fighting out of the game. That's right. Back in the days when they had East and West, they always figured the East, uh, out of the juniors, were the guys with, uh, with, they were the fighters and the gooners, and the Westerners all had the finesse and could skate. They eh, do. Well, no, I, no, I think it was just the opposite. The, the tough league was the Western Canada Hockey League. Okay, all right. And the I'll... East was all the goal scorers and all that. Big, uh, and of course, the uh, the Quebec League was the big bunch of goal scorers. Right. You know, so. I don't know. Yeah, we used to. I don't think we ever lost too many East-West games, if I remember. <laughs> yeah, not too many at all. Well, I've, you know, I've talked to some of your old line mates. I've had Al Dumbo. Oh, is that right? How's Al doing? And Al's doing well. He is now the coach at uh, at Regina. Uh, is that, yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Hick uh, moved to the front office. He was co-coaching and uh, Co co-coaching where? Where was Hick? Uh, he he's one of the owners out in Regina. Is that right? So uh, Al's now got full throttle on that one. That's great. And a couple of weeks ago, I had a chance to talk to Robbie Laird in Moncton. 
Yeah, I just talked to Robbie uh, about a week ago. As I keep in touch with Robbie quite a bit, and it seems like he's got things turned around out there again. It started out pretty slow, but sounds like his team seems like his team's doing pretty well again. In fact, I think the day I called him, he was in the middle of a Moncton snowstorm, and he was expecting to get three feet of snow before it stopped. Jeez. <laughs> but I, I try to round up the old crew, and no. one, one of your old policemen, Darcy Keating, had him on a couple of weeks. Oh, ago. is that right? Uh, Darcy of the Royal Canadian Mounted, you know. <laughs> yeah, it brings, it brings back some old, good memories of these, you saying these guys. Well, you know, it, it's a case where uh, that's one of the reasons we like to do what we're doing here, right. uh, is to bring back some of the voices and then some of the memories and thoughts of the players and the things that uh, that happened over the years. And the game has changed not only on the ice but off the ice, even at this level anymore. I mean, it's getting to be a very expensive proposition. It sure is. It's it sure looks like uh, the the Franckies there in Fort Wayne and, and other people like yourself are are really doing a heck of a job in Fort Wayne. Well, it's incredible, uh, you know, and, and the Franckies uh, in the forefront of it all, really a hard-working crew, yeah. and they have positively, totally turned it around. And I mean, but you're right, it's going everywhere. The other night in Milwaukee, they had 17,500 in the game. Wow. And, of course... Uh, Dude, what would you think of a guy coming back out of the National League and getting a five-year contract in the eye for 650000 Oh, jeez. It's unbelievable, isn't it? 30 years too soon. Eh? Yeah, well, well, even 10 years too soon. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's just so much opportunity for players anymore. It's it's great, you know. It's, it's great. Uh, how's the penetration of Red Wing influence up in the Flint area? Is it pretty good? Or? Um, Yeah, I, well, I mean, it, you know, everybody here is like, you know, it's just like living in Detroit. Everybody's yeah. gung-ho on the Red Wing, sure, you know. But uh, other than that, uh, all all quiet as far as Doogie's concerned with the hockey front. Well, listen, you better what you better do is uh, find some ice, uh, you know, a flat sheet someplace, Dugger, and uh, you still got blades, or have you have you even looked for them? No, I don't even have blades, Bob. <laughs> Since the team stopped buying them for me, I haven't never bought my own. <laughs> and you don't need them in all any work you're on right no, now. No, no. So, well, you know, you created a heck of a lot of fantastic memories for the people here. Well, that's great. And uh, without a doubt, when uh, when you look at not only your records, but also right. the talent you displayed on the ice, yeah. you were by far and away one of the all-time uh, Comets, and there's no doubt about it. Well, thank you very much, Bob. And uh, you ever see it? You don't see others, of course, with your travels. You really don't get into hockey country, so you don't really uh, get at a lot of the guys. If you were closer to the game, I'm sure you'd see a lot of them again. Oh, I really would. You know one of the only guys, well, a few guys in Fort Wayne, but Robbie Laird I keep in touch with, and he lets, keeps me up on a lot of things that are going on in hockey. Yeah, Robbie Irons, I suppose, also. Crazy. Yeah, I talk to Robbie. Yeah, I golf with those guys in the summertime, Dan O'Driscoll. And yeah, that old crew. And, of course, uh, I'm just trying to think who else is around. Uh, well, we see Dave Norris quite a bit. Comes down from Toronto. Oh, he does he? Yeah. Yeah, Pinner's working with uh, with a group of uh, Canadian uh, hockey advertising and marketing people. Yeah, he's uh, he's doing real well, I guess. And everybody seems to be perking along in their own way. So, well, we we miss not seeing you, and uh, hopefully we can get you back. Uh, you're probably coming back for the old timers golf tournament at least. Uh. Oh yeah, I'm going to make it this year. I, well, I, I was supposed to golf the last year, but I I was on the road. You know exactly. And uh, once you get there for the golf tournament, Doogie. The next thing has to be the old time. Okay, I'll definitely try to make it this summer for that for that golf. When is that? Is that June or it July? It'll probably be a June date, and I'm sure Robbie will be in touch with you to okay. get it on the way. But I uh, just appreciated the fact we had a chance to to talk to you. I'm glad you called back, and I hope you got the quarters for the washer. <laughs> yeah, I did, Bob. <laughs> All right. Well, we wish you well and good traveling, Doogie, and uh, we miss you. You're a great guy. Oh, thanks, Bob. And uh, we'll see you with the golf clubs in the summer. All right. Nice talking to you. Hey, nice talking to you. Yeah, Thank you very much. Say best of luck to the comments, though. I certainly will. Okay, Bob. Thanks, Doogie. All right. So that's how it happened, as we had a long conversation with old Taz, uh, Terry McDougal, uh, earlier today. And uh, Doogie seems to be doing well, and there are rumors of matrimony in the not-too-distant future. So uh, it, it, that's right. You, you get caught up in that, uh, in that uh, urge and that surge. But uh, that's one of the things we like to do here with Comet Corner is bring back some of the great old players and at least find them in voice to see what's